So as usual, it's been forever and a day since I posted anything up here. And, um, you know, overall, I just I've, I've never been a fan of making videos, but uh, something came up the other day. I thought I would just um, scratch it out easily here. Um, and really, there's um, a, a whole world of, of trading strategies out there and in, in a lot of the, you know, what you come across in, in a lot of these repositories and so forth. Uh, they all follow very similar conventions where they're basically um, seeking out some kind of anomaly. And that anomaly could be driven by really just about anything. It, you know, it could be fundamental. It could be technically driven. Um, you know, depending on the market, <clears throat> usually for, for whatever reason, FX, um, a lot of these um, things are technically driven uh, using exponential indicators. And, you know, what a lot of these, uh, a lot of times these strategies will do is they'll seek out certain conditions. Um, just basically fitting a certain profile uh, where, uh, let's say you're using an RSI, for example, or any other exponentially calculated indicator. I mean, they're, they're all basically the same. Uh, that'll seek a series of overbought or oversold conditions. Uh, so, you know, on, you know, buy the dip pullbacks such as these, it'll work. Uh, but over here, when we're, it's time for breaking out, uh, obviously that whole dynamic changes and usually they're latching on late because they're using some other kind of you know lagging mechanism or or, or whatever um, so uh, any properly optimized strategy that I've ever seen usually um, is in you know incorporating some kind of volatility component and basically what it's doing is it's seeking out uh, a set of conditions where um, you know and, and it's done wisely, by the way, uh, just that's basically seeking a, either avoid in volatility for a, a mean reverting type strategy or obviously, you know, an increase in volatility for a breakout type strategy, which generally trades less uh, just due to just natural cycles in the market overall. And um, just to use kind of a, a dumbed down example, you know, you see these uh, Asian session scalpers in the FX world where basically they'll uh, use strictly a time of day in order to determine volatility. I mean, j just saying that, I, you know, I, I think you can, you know, assess where I'm going with that. I mean, it's, it's obviously not the most intelligent way to go about, uh, you know, performing anything like that. So, um, but one thing that uh, really always trips up any trader, you know, whether new or old, is, is uh, environment uh, many times. Because what will happen is uh, you'll be presented with a series of conditions. And it doesn't matter how you're entering the market. You know, it could be based on, you know, any kind of derivative-based um, um, indicator, or it could be, you know, or strictly order flow or things along those lines. And um, overall, if your location is wrong based on that environment, then, you know, obviously, you know, nothing really matters because you can get the same signal all over your chart. Is it any good? You know, well, that's a matter of uh, volatility oftentimes. And so, you know, whether you're, if you're making markets or you're doing anything along those lines, really what you're looking at most, for the most part, is volatility. And you're executing in areas where you know uh, you have the ability to get executed. So uh, this is uh, E-mini S&P 500 futures. You're basically just looking at a fixed range volume profile graph plotted that stops right about here at our peak, okay? Uh, so basically what I'm trying to do here is just demonstrate what happens on this, you know, final leg uh, when we have uh, or price runs into these um, previously traded areas. And, um, and really, uh, you know, when you think of volatility, what, you know, what, what is it? I mean, it's basically just a matter of friction as far as the market is concerned. Uh, when you look at liquidity, liquidity is really nothing more than or it is nothing more than uh, resting limit orders uh, on a book. Uh, so when you look at the ratio of uh, market orders uh, hitting against the number of limit orders, uh, really, that's that's volatility. OK, and if you have no friction in the way, in other words, if you have an area where there's a void in limit orders and a bunch of market orders are trading through there, they're going to have no problem pushing prices, you know, uh, through that area up or down. It doesn't matter. And so uh, overall, uh, what you're seeking on your charts when you're looking to determine, you know, if prices are basically going to be running, gunning through an area or they're going to be hitting the brakes and slowing down um, is just, again, just previously executed volume because uh, there is a draw to these areas, okay, for liquidity uh, for a number of different reasons. When you get to the edges of these areas, prices are drawn back into them 
uh, f in order to basically attract that liquidity and execute on any number of different objectives from uh, you know, a purely mechanical standpoint. So uh, just as an example, when you're looking at uh, a range such as this, and we're on a daily chart here, so you know, this is going all the way back to uh, August of last year, you know, we're, when we get in back into these areas where we have our um, the the bulk of our volumes that have been executed and traded, um, prices hit the brakes. They stop. They pause. They do what they need to do uh, before you know this trend resumes and overall market orders are required to take prices higher or lower. Uh, market orders are generally dictating that prices are going lower here. Uh, in, in a case like this, but obviously the skew of the book overall is down. Um, but even with that, you can see that when we do start to enter into these zones, once again, price slows down, it hits the brakes. And anybody who's traded with volume profile for years knows this. Uh, there's a number of different ways you can do this. Some people like to dissect this on a weekly or monthly basis. Um, I have just day session volumes I look at and I look at this as well if not only for the reason that I don't like to get carried away with things, you know, that at some point you need to stop and you can only look at so much, um, you know, depending on how many instruments you're trading, especially, but overall for the bigger picture, uh, you're just basically looking at the last time prices traded through this area. And, um, so again, um, when you come up to an area such as this one, okay, where we have a low getting registered here, again, just look at the profile. You'll see that there is a void in executed volume over here. And where that void is, is basically where we had one of the most aggressive movements to the downside, okay? Now in uptrends or in downtrends, you know, anytime you're reverting back into a range of any, any type, um, you know, conventional wisdom tells you to basically target, uh, you, you know, your high points in volume, your peaks, okay? Uh, but, you know, when the market is moving aggressively, and, uh, you know, there, there is, you know, a, a strong catalyst underway. Uh, what generally tends to happen is you'll, you'll knock right through these areas, usually not easily. It's, it's, it's usually a, a slower moving type of trend. Um, but you'll still get through it, no problem, especially the lower that you go. And, um, and price will make it to the edges of these areas before they start to revert back into them. And, and this is volume profile 101. What I'm telling you right now isn't anything that's, you know, there's no special sauce here. This is, you know, about as basic as it gets. Um, and this happens on an intraday basis just as much as it happens on, uh, you know, obviously a more macro basis. Okay, so when you're looking uh, where, at points at where prices are likely to hit the brakes, again, you're basically just looking at these uh, areas of previously traded high volumes. These are, in a sense, uh, I don't want to say magnets in terms of price, but they definitely are magnets in terms of liquidity. So in other words, uh, more participants are likely to put in resting order flow in these areas than they are in, you know, obviously our lower volume areas. And again, think in terms of friction. So if I have more liquidity in this area, what's going to happen to price? It's going to be, uh, it's going to be slowing down because it's going to be running into uh, lots of resting order flow overall. And again, this is a very top level concept. I'm not breaking things down uh, into the nitty gritty here, but I just wanted to get this uh, covered because it really is something that a lot of people don't understand. Um, and so if you were to back this up and you just see how this you know, more or less stood the test of time, uh, you'll see the same conventions apply over and over again. So uh, just as an example on this fixed range, I'm just, I'm starting here, I'm ending here at our peak. And so even on uh, our February's aggressive move to the downside, you know, the same thing happened. We got down to the base of the high volume node ledge, deflected off of it, okay, and came right back in to more or less create this range that we've been in for quite some time now. And so, uh, again, it's, uh, you can view it as a point of attraction or whatever it might be, but uh, the bottom line is, you know, you, you are expecting a shift in activity when prices enter these zones and, and it's not easy to get through them again um, but it happens so uh, with that uh, the, the one thing that's really important worth stating here that um, you know I wish I knew more about when I started doing all this was uh, you know even though you have these areas like as we just showed um, don't forget you're still in a downtrend 
or you're still in an uptrend, <clears throat> okay? Um, and when you're looking to revert to a mean in any kind of range, you know, really it's the same thing as any other type of analysis where you're taking a top-down perspective. You have your short-term and you have your long-term. Uh, so on a longer-term basis, you know, our move is down, targeting really just, you know, the extremities of this range, uh, or more importantly, where volumes took a big dive, Okay, so if I were to put that fixed range back on here, you'll see, you know, we have, a, a, another, we have another pocket of volumes that's basically down here just waiting um, in the winds. So, uh, but ultimately, as prices are on their way lower here or as prices are on their way higher here, uh, these are using the edges of high volume nodes to basically propel themselves and keep moving off to the downside. You know, and when I talk about anything, especially when it comes to something like volume profile, I'm careful to... Uh, you know, careful in terms of what I say, just just for the mere fact that, you know, this is a form of analysis that has been, uh, I don't, you know, not beaten to death over the years. But uh, what happens is, you know, anytime you have anything like this, uh, you know, in comes the theory, you know, and there's a lot of theory, especially when it comes to volume profile. And uh, when I say that, the first thing I think of are day types, uh, basically, you know, each day you're, you're presented with a different type of distribution curve. Um, and by the way, this is, this is I just, I'm just using trading view here, but uh, if you're doing this intraday, you're going to want to be separating RTH and ETH. Uh, but basically, each one of these uh, profiles presents a different type of day, and uh, the theory is that one day will lead to the next and so forth. And uh, ultimately, what you're doing when you start to do stuff like that is, um, you know, you're, you're in standard... Uh, you know, price pattern type of territory. In other words, you know, the success ratio on that kind of theoretical context is is, is really just moderate overall. Okay, so, uh, but overall, uh, the, you know, the thing that I really just wanted to drive home here, uh, again, it's, it's a fundamental concept. I, I always try to pump the brakes here too because I, I tend to get ahead of myself um, when I do make these videos. But, uh, you know, again, when you're looking for prices to... You know, or looking at areas on your chart where prices are likely to hit the brakes and slow down, uh, you know, you're, you're basically hunting out these pockets. Uh, when it comes to actually entering positions, um, everything I do personally is just on the edge of these uh, high volume nodes. Okay, so just as an example, if we're, if we're going, you know, to the downside, uh, prices will come down here, they'll consolidate, this will start to build out. Um, and then you'll start to get your, you know, your, your D-shaped structure here, you know, just your standard curve. Uh, and prices are always repelling off the edges of these, okay? As you can see over here, we just got, you know, this tweezer top or whatever you like to call it. Um, and, uh, and this is, you know, this is trend following 101. I've got examples of this all over you know, my Twitter feed and, and things like that. But, um, you know, overall, um, you know, that's, that's about it. Uh, again, just always be conscious of your environment anytime you're assembling you know, any kind of strategy overall um, because actually I'll just show you something one, one more thing before we go here um, let me get some Bollinger Bands on here you know I like to use this example because uh, with something like a Bollinger Band you know anything that's calculating standard deviation and so forth you know if you're just trading pure prices um, standard deviation is a little different because it, it, it is um, used as a quoting mechanism for other things so it's you know, um, but when you're looking at it in a traditional sense, as and I, when I say traditional, I'm, I'm just basically referring to what's popular out there. Uh, you know, this is the norm. Uh, volatility will spike. You know, you'll come down. And what will happen to these bands? Well, they're, they're going to open wide, you know, widen, of course. And, um, and I think these are just set to two standard deviations. I don't know what they are. But, um, you know, when that happens, though, you know, let's say you're optimizing a strategy that um, either stays out in conditions like this. Well, you know, oftentimes when, when price spikes like that, um, you know, after a couple of days, it, it just stops. It hits the brakes and starts to, um, you know, starts to mean revert yet again. But, you know, in a tighter range, you know, after that spike in volatility. OK, just here's an example of something like that. So, you know, we have our breakout day. We have a follow through day which is typically less volatile than the, the, the initial. And then what do we do? We, we consolidate. Okay, and the reason we're consolidating, again, is because we're hitting, you know, an area of um, previously traded high volumes. I think we had our POC right around here. 
Okay, and uh, but again, if you're just looking at the bands like right now, I mean these these things are huge, they're massive, and yet there's tons of opportunity in here. Uh, but you know, using any kind of just lagging calculation like that, obviously you're you know you're dealing with a whole different breed of animal. So uh, that's about it. I hope this helps, and um, yeah, I'll catch you probably going to be a long time from now. But uh, you know, uh, overall, I just. Um, uh, I'll, I'll see we'll see if I can keep more coming, but uh, as usual, you know, it's just hard time-wise and everything else. So uh, thanks, and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye.